Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to Q&A with Dr. Mercy. Um, happy Friday. Happy holidays. Um, I hope you guys are doing well and you, you guys must be really, really happy. Today's Friday. Thank God it's Friday and you must be anticipating a relaxing this weekend. Well, uh, where are you guys all uh, viewing this broadcast from? Um, what, what city, what state, what country? If you can type it in, in the comment box, that would be awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for viewing us and um, really appreciate you viewing the show. Well, as you can tell, it's holiday season. I decided to be a little festive and I decided to be festive for one of two reasons. One, I love Christmas. Christmas is the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ who came to save us. And um, so what better reason to be thankful that, you know, we had a savior who came to the world to save us from our sins. So I'm happy about that. I'm also wearing this because of our topic today, which is what is holiday heart syndrome? And we'll soon dive into that in a moment. Um, before we do dive into that, I just wanted to say that this will be our last session uh, for this year, 2021. Yay! <laughs> and the next time we do another episode uh, will be next year in January. So um, I'll say this again towards the end of the episode. If I don't, uh, have a wonderful holiday. I hope you enjoy the holiday season with your family and your loved ones. And, and uh, I can't wait to see you again in January. Okay, so let's dive into the topic. What is holiday heart syndrome? Well, holiday heart syndrome is a um, clinical manifestation that we as clinicians, as physicians and healthcare workers have recognized that occurs during the holiday season. Okay, so for some reason, as people are enjoying themselves, may, they tend to drink a little bit too much, okay? And that excessive drinking of alcohol is what excites the heart to um, jump into abnormal rhythms. And these abnormal rhythms can affect your heart in many ways. Um, the most common abnormal rhythm that the heart jumps into with excessive alcohol use is a, a heart condition called atrial fibrillation. Now, how many of you guys have heard about atrial fibrillation? Atrial fibrillation is a um, heart rhythm that's very common in the United States. Um, you, a lot of you may know of family members or friends or colleagues or, or, or just acquaintances that have talked about having atrial fibrillation. And let me explain to you what atrial fibrillation is. So normally when you, your heart beats, it beats in rhythm, right? So it'd be like, ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. This heartbeat is what is typically what we hear when we put our stethoscopes in our ears and put the bell of our stethoscopes to your chest. What that sound is, is the heart bringing in blood into itself and the heart pushing out blood out into the different uh, areas of the body. So it brings in blood that has low oxygen, okay? And then the lungs help it out by infusing oxygen in that blood that it brought in. And then it pumps out the blood that has a lot of oxygen to the rest of your cells in your body. So your cells can have oxygen and can function, okay? When it beats in rhythm, okay, it's able to fulfill its function. The problem is with atrial fibrillation is there's this extra beat. And so instead of it to go boom, 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 you're hearing things like this in the stethoscope, boom, 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 
boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom. And it gets to a point that you cannot predict the next beat. That's when you start the likelihood of you having atrial fibrillation just by hearing it on the stethoscope is very high. Now, the problem with having atrial fibrillation is that when the heart is just beating randomly, that kind of reduces the force that it has to pump blood in and pump blood out, okay? Because when it's randomly reduced, when it's randomly contracting like that, it's not giving itself enough time to muster up energy, to pump in blood and to pump out blood. You get what I'm saying? So with those random movements, the blood is just kind of coming in, a little bit coming in, a little bit coming out, a little bit coming in, a little. So it's not properly doing its job. And as a result of that, you have problems. The body it, with a long standing rhythm like that, the uh, heart has to make some changes of itself in order to get enough blood in and get enough blood out. After time with a, a heart that's just chaotically beating randomly, um, the body works to try to overcompensate that by getting bigger. Now you may be like, well, why is it getting bigger? Well, it when it's randomly just contracting, it's not able to push all, squeeze out all the blood out of it. And so as it's randomly contracting, some of that blood that goes in stays in. And that just causes the heart to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's when you have another condition that we, we will likely talk about later, and that's called heart failure. Now, I know some of you may know family members who have heart failure. And with heart failure, you know, there's more that comes into play with that. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But essentially, going back to atrial fibrillation with this very chaotic heartbeat, right? You not only have a condition where the heart can expand because it's not able to force all the blood out, but you also have, when you have these chaotic beats, instead of going boom, boom, expand, boom, boom, expand, it's going like this, okay, okay. What happens is that blood that's in the heart, it starts to congeal. Hmm. It starts to develop clots. Because remember I said, not when you don't have the heart squeezing out the blood and, and, and out of its system, and it's just kind of going chaotic like that, some of that blood in the heart just stays there. And since it's not moving, it starts to develop clots. These clots um, then eventually do get out of the heart. And when they get out of the heart, they can go what? To any organ system in your body. So if, if these clots that develop in the heart because of this chaotic movement gets out of the heart and goes down below, it can cause a clot in your kidneys. It can cause a clot in your legs. And if, it, if this clot, okay, gets out of the body and goes up, it can cause a clot in your lungs and it can cause a clot in your brain, causing what we call a stroke. So I say all of this to tell you that having irregular heart beats is not necessarily a good thing. There are some heart irregular heartbeats that are benign. But for this intensive purpose, for what we're talking about, especially when it comes to holiday heart syndrome, the most common cause, I mean, the most common rhythm, excuse me, that occurs when people drink too much is atrial fibrillation. And it's that chaotic heart 
rhythm that I was telling you about, okay? So we want to try to avoid that, especially during this holiday season. So ways to avoid holiday heart syndrome. And okay, well, first of all, before I talk about ways to avoid it, let me talk about what you feel when you have atrial fibrillation. So let's say someone uh, drank too much and they now develop that irregular heartbeat that I was talking about, right? Okay, so that irregular heartbeat, not only is it irregular like that, but when you first get it, it goes fast. So you'll be just, you'll be like, boom, 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 boom. And so typically when you have a, a heart, normal heart rate, okay, a heart, the heart rate is actually the measurement of how fast your heart beats. So when you go boom, 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 typically the normal heart rate is about 70, 80, less than 100 beats per minute. Boom, boom. So you do this about the heart beats about 70 to, to less than 100 beats per minute. Some people, especially younger um, uh, people, they tend to have even lower beats. And people have said that it's because they're so young and they don't require needing the heart to beat so fast to get enough oxygen to the rest of the body. So you can have some people in those in, in, uh, with only 60 beats per minute. And for young people, that's fine. Also people who are on blood pressure medication, sometimes they have a lower heart rate because of the blood pressure medication. But when you have atrial fibrillation and when you're first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, because of the chaoticness of the heart and it's not organized when it's making all those beats, you can see people who have um, heart rates as high as 120 or 150 beats per minute. So it's just like kind of like just beating fast, 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 fast. And so when you're looking at the vital sign monitor machine, they're going at 150, 160, 120 beats per minute. And they feel it. A lot of times they feel it. What they feel is they feel uh, short of breath. I'm feeling short of breath. Or, and they start feeling some uh, of their heart beating like really, really fast. They can either feel it here or sometimes people say they can hear their heart beating really fast. So, and then sometimes they feel lightheaded. And it makes sense because if your heart is beating very chaotically and fast, the oxygen doesn't have enough, the blood, blood doesn't have enough time to get enough oxygen in it. And it's not really properly flowing in the areas that it needs to flow and giving it the, those areas enough time to get oxygen from it. So I'm not, so you wouldn't be surprised if they feel short of breath. You're not surprised when they feel lightheaded because they're not getting enough oxygen to their brain and they're feeling some chest pain because of the fastness of the heart and they're feeling their heart racing or they're hearing their heart racing. So that's when people come into the hospital and that's when we see them. And to be honest, I see a lot of people with rhythm issues shortly after the holiday season. So it is because you're drinking way too much. And so we need to, we, I wanted to make sure that we talked about, okay, what is a reasonable amount to drink? And so I have with me a uh, diagram that I wanted to show. Let me see if I can be able to show that. Yes, which pretty much talks about the, the standard drink. What is the standard drink? So a standard drink is about, if you're talking from um, drinking a beer, which contains about 5% alcohol, that's about um, 12 fluid ounces. Okay. So that's a standard drink for beer. If you are uh, drinking a malt liquor, okay, 
And this is shown is a, a 12 ounce glass. And in that it contains about 7% alcohol. A standard drink of a malt liquor is about eight to nine fluid ounces, okay? If you're drinking table wine or wine, um, that contains a lot more than beer at 12% um, alcohol. And a standard drink would be about five fluid ounces of table wine. And then lastly, um, the most that the, the alcohol um, content has uh, in this diagram is um, distilled spirits. They have the most uh, alcohol contact, content at 40% of alcohol. And if you were to drink that, a standard drink size would be about 1.5 fluid ounce shots. So the, the distilled spirits are the whiskeys, the vodka, the tequilas, the rum, the gin. Yes, all of those. Those fall into distilled spirits. So a standard drink would be about 1.5 fluid ounces. Okay. So that is what constitutes a standard drink. Now, uh, uh, if, uh, you know, depending on your gender, right, y the typical limit of alcohol intake should be the following. For men, you should drink about two drinks a day. So about two drinks for men, okay? Um, so two standard drinks that are noted here a day for men. And then for women, you should drink about, fortunately, one, one one a standard drink a day uh you know um that is what constitute uh, uh the daily intake of alcohol so what we see is that people during the holidays oh they're so happy there's just you know be they're joyful and merry and they're just free flowing so they drink and eat whatever they want but we have to be mindful that doing so can cause adverse effects. Doing so can cause you to have symptoms and conditions that you don't want to have. So the take home point is let us be very moderate in our drinking during this holiday season. Yes, we're happy. Yes, we're with loved ones. We're, we're with uh, family members, friends, but we have to remember that we're still a human at the end of the day and there's only so much we can consume, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys because a lot of people are like, oh, what does what is a standard drink? And this is what a standard drink uh, is. Um, and I got this from the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. And also the CDC also collaborates this as well. So let's just be very mindful when it comes to drinking this holiday season, okay? <laughs> All right. So I wanted to go more further because not only can this holiday season bring about this holiday heart syndrome, but a lot of times when I'm in the hospital, um, especially after the holidays, we see this influx of people who come in because of underlying other heart disease issues, because of uncontrolled blood sugars. Um, and so I wanted to kind of go further and talk more about, you know, what it is that happens during this holiday season that caused people to have this flare up of underlying medical conditions. So um, what happens is that, you know, during this holiday season, especially during Christmas, you know, we're stressed, right? You know, if we, we have the family get together at our house for Christmas, we're busy running around in stores trying to get, you know, the, the food, trying to get the decorations, trying to be prepared because of the event. And that increases our stress load. Or could it be we're going and we're shopping for gifts for our loved ones. And, you know, that brings us stress, not only stress to trying to find the perfect gift for them, but also stress because we're maybe not financially stable at that moment. That brings in more stress, right? And what does that do to our bodies? Well, what it does to our bodies, bodies is it causes an increase of this hormone called cortisol. 
Cortisol is what we know as the stress hormone. I know you guys have probably heard of it before. Um, cortisol is what um, the body uh, uses, okay, whenever it is stressed, okay? Cortisol, along with another um, hormone called epinephrine, is also released during a very stressed moment. Now, an analogy that you may have heard back in, in uh, school, or you may not have, is this theory called fight or flight. They always used it whenever they were referencing someone who was running from a bear. If you're running from a bear, your body senses danger. So what it does is it needs to release a hormone to get your organs that need you to run to start being activated at full speed so you can do that running. And two of those hormones is cortisol and epinephrine, okay? When you have to run from a bear, that's good that you have those release of cortisol and epinephrine so you can run from that, that animal and get away from danger, right? But unfortunately, we release those hormones when we sh maybe shouldn't because we feel emotional stress. Yes, we're stressed because, but it's more emotional and we're not trying to run away. And so when we release those hormones during our emotional stress, what happens? It affects our heart. Our heart starts feeling, okay, we need to run. There's a bear around, but there's no bear. We're just emotionally stressed from whatever event that's happening. And then the cortisol level, when, when cortisol is high, what it does is it releases sugar because it wants to give your muscles and all the organs nutrients so that you can run from that bear. But when you have emotional stress, that increase in cortisol, that increases your sugar, where are you running? You're not running anywhere. So all it does is it causes you to have uncontrolled sugars. It causes you, your heart to be extra burdened and the, over time, that's not really good for your body, okay? So if you have diabetes, if you see a release of extra cortisol in your hormones, in your body, what that would do, that would make your diabetes fall out of whack, right? Same thing, if you have underlying heart condition and you're extra stressed, all that's gonna do is make your heart condition, your heart disease even worse. So that's why we have to be mindful, especially those who have underlying heart conditions, underlying conditions during this holiday season, let's be mindful to reduce the stress, okay? Another thing that happens, we talked about alcohol intake. Let's talk about consuming. Let's talk about eating too much that we should not be eating, okay? Now I know holiday season, oh, you know, Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas, you know, we cook and, you know, we just throw it down. You know, we, we, uh, we uh, just cook all this good food, food that we probably haven't eaten since the last time we came together. And so it's just a time to be merry. But you also have to keep in mind, you still have that same body. You still have that same body that you had the week before and the week before and the week before. And so that body has not changed. So even though it's a great time to celebrate, it's a great time to eat, it's a great time to be to be merry, you have to be mindful. Of, well, my body, you know, I don't want to stress it too much, okay? So that's why during this holiday season, let's eat in moderation. I'm not saying you can't eat. I'm just saying eat it in moderation, right? So that, that if you're a diabetic, you know what you can and cannot eat. You know what you can't what limits you can and cannot do just be mindful during this holiday season to stay within a parameter that's safe for you same thing with underlying heart condition be mindful if you have underlying heart failure okay and that requires that you have to limit your water intake let's not just because it's christmas drink uh, a full uh, uh two gallons of water when you know your limit is to be less than two liters okay same thing if you're a diabetic and you know you have an 1800 uh calorie diet limit 
Let's not uh, uh, eat a whole uh, uh, a whole uh, pie or a whole a whole cake because we, we want to do Christmas. Okay, let's be the, let's eat it. Eat if we have to eat cake. Let's eat it in moderation and keeping in mind. Oh, I do have a, a calorie uh, limit that I need to stay within. Okay. And that brings to other things, you know, a lot of times, you know, during the stressful season, you know, as we're traveling, going and seeing family members, we may or may not forget to take our medications. We're so happy. We're so caught up in the moment that we, you know, forget that, you know, we're still that same human that we were a couple, couple weeks ago. So if that same human a couple weeks ago required blood pressure medication, you still have to take your blood pressure medications. It may seem like I'm, I'm talking, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's obvious, but you'll be surprised when I go into the hospital and someone's coming in with uncontrolled blood sugar or uncontrolled high blood pressure. And they're like, yeah, I went to Montana to, um, for the holidays. And uh, I thought I left my medication. I thought I brought my medications with me. But, um, yeah, no, I, I, I guess I didn't. We have to be really mindful, okay? <laughs> if you needed them before, please, even now so, take them now. Even now so, okay? Because what we don't want you to do is we don't want you to have to come into the hospital after you've eaten, you know, and stay for a couple of days. Because even these attacks, even these uncontrolled blood pressures or uncontrolled blood sugars, you think, oh, you know, just go to the hospital, get it fixed. No, those are just insulting your body. And the more episodes of that did you have, the more your body can't handle it anymore. And there's going to be a point of no return where no matter how controlled you are, you're at the end stage, which is the severe form of that condition where you can't change it anymore. So I'm not saying you can't have fun. I'm not saying you can't enjoy yourself. It's just do it under moderation. Whether you have a condition or you don't have a condition, do it under moderation, okay? So all of us should eat, drink under moderation, okay? So, yes, um, I have a couple tips, you know, for this holiday season, okay? And I just wanted to share them with you, you know, just, uh, and a lot of them have already you know, kind of talked about. So, uh, you know, let's get started. So tip number one was eat and drink in moderation. Now we've heard that you eat and you drink in moderation. I've said it earlier. Um, I just want to be mindful uh, that, you know, just is, I'm not saying you can't celebrate. I'm just saying, just do it in moderation. Tip number two, like I talked about, don't skip your medications. If you needed your medications before the holidays, you're going to need them during your holidays. So just don't skip it. Uh, try to be, try to, try to, try to be a good, try to develop a good habit of not skipping your medication for no, for any reason, unless you're having adverse effects uh, with your medications. And in that case, please make sure you talk to your doctor. So before the, the holidays, if you're, if you are, are running out of your medications, it may be a good time to refill them because I also do know that um, a lot of times during the holiday season, that's when everybody wants to quickly get their medication before they travel somewhere. So if you can, make sure you refill your medications sooner than later. Again, it's, this also is just maybe in line with tip number one with eating and drinking in moderation. If you eat and drink in moderation, you you will be able to maintain your weight. Um, again, like I was kind of referring to, the more we do yo-yo dieting where we're you know up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down over time, that does adversely affect your body. So, you know, this tip is really just a tip for your life. Maintain your, your weight as best as you can. Another tip, tip four, is reduce the salt, especially for us um, African and African, uh, people of African descent or, you know, African-Americans or those with African lineage. 
uh, we tend to have high blood pressure that is affected or that is caused by our salt intake, okay? So <clears throat> especially for us, it is important that before we have high blood pressure and even during uh, those, even during the time <clears throat> that those are diagnosed, those people are, who are diagnosed with high blood pressure, there should be awareness of how much salt we intake on a daily basis, okay? I know for those who do have underlying heart conditions, as well as those who have high blood pressure, the goal is to not um, consume more than two grams of salt a day. Now, how do you figure out how many grams? Is by looking at the nutritional chart at the back of each product, or by going online and you know Googling what food you're eating, whether it's from a restaurant or it's a product. A lot of times you have these um, food journal or food assessment websites that can give you the nutritional value or the nutritional chart to certain products, whether they're cooked products or even like things like fruits and vegetables. And um, hopefully I can be able to do a video about, you know, just what to look out for when you're looking at a nutritional chart or nutritional information uh, for products that you see either in the store or, or you look up in restaurants. But all in all, what I wanna say is let's reduce the salt. So if we can reduce it, that'd be better. I know salt tastes so good in, in certain products, but we don't want the effects of increased salt intake. And then the last tip that I have is listen to your body. Get medical help ASAP if needed. Now, I know a lot of us tend to, you know, sometimes dismiss what our, when it, we start sensing uh, an underlying condition or, or symptoms. And I, I can say that because, you know, this is what I see in the hospital a lot. You know, someone's like, yeah, I've been feeling this achy kind of a, a situation here in my, in my chest. And it's been going on and off for, you know, about two weeks. And in my head, I'm thinking like, hmm, I, I wish, you know, so for some, you know, they catch it right on time. But so for some, I have caught myself thinking, man, if you could have only just gone, come into the hospital a week earlier, that could have saved you a lot of damage from your heart. So I say all that to say, you know, you know your body. And I tell my patients all the time, you know your body more than us medical providers do. If you feel something out of the ordinary, pay attention to it. And if, if it's concerning, get the help, okay? Um, a lot of times, especially after the holidays, we have people who come in for, you know, they have heart attacks, you know. Not to say that the food that they were eating or the drink that they're eating caused a heart attack during the holidays, but maybe it's just they had, it was a ticking time bomb. And so with eating and drinking, that kind of, tipped them over the edge and they now developed a heart failure or excuse me, heart attack. And symptoms that they would uh, describe when they have a heart attack, just letting you know, is they'd have achiness in their chest, okay? They may have some shortness of breath. They'll have uh, some nausea or vomiting and they may have some feeling like, like they're sweating uncontrollably, okay? Those are the most common symptoms of a heart attack. Um, but especially with women, we tend to have atypical signs of heart attacks. So it may be that aching shoulder pain and with, with some numbness, especially in your left, um, left uh, arm. Um, it may just be shortness of breath or it may just be upper, you know, uh, stomach pain. You know, it's just a good idea if you start feeling symptoms that are just not going away, it's just a good idea to seek medical attention. And the awesome part about it is nowadays, you can get help online called telemedicine or telehealth. 
So if you can't go to the hospital right away, go online, seek professional medical uh, pro professionals, and they can guide you and see whether or not you definitely do need to go in to the hospital, or maybe it could wait and you could be able to see your main doctor, your primary care doctor at your next clinic visit. So you ha have access to getting medical professional help, be it online through telemedicine, be it the nearest urgent care. And it seems like nowadays everyone's around an urgent care uh, uh, area or nearby hospital. So take advantage of that wherever you are, whether you're at home or whether you're visiting family and friends, okay? So um, I think that's it for me. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching a Q and A with Dr. Mercy. I believe Q and A with Dr. Mercy and also Medicine for the People will have our Christmas hiatus and we'll be back again next January. So we will be seeing you next year, okay? Um, and so uh, on behalf of um, Q&A with Dr. Mercy and Medicine for the People, we would wanna wish you a happy holidays and have an awesome, awesome new year and we will see you then, okay? So before I end this, I do want to um, end this with a, a video from uh, Black Women Empower Powered um, there are some awesome and exciting things that are happening with Black Women Empowered. And so I want to end this with a video so you guys can learn more. So I'll, I'll, we will be right back and um, bye. Hello, I am Pastor Dewana Whitaker, better known as Pastor D, and I just want to talk about what BWE means to me. Uh, BWE is such a special thing, and I am so glad to have been uh, a part of it now for, I know, two and a half years. Uh, it encourages, it motivates, it inspires when you're feeling down. You can turn on BWE and feel uplifted. Uh, when you're you're sad and, and 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 don't know you know where the joy is coming from, you can count on BWE to have anything that you need for any type of situation. I don't care whether it's a physical thing or a mental thing. The mental health is there for you. The physicality.